Welcome to the Shepherd's Corner from the Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church located at 4570 Page Boulevard at 1220 Reverend G.H. Pruitt Place where our pastor is Dr. Julius Caesar Bonner IV. Now, let's hear today's message. Every praise Every word of worship Every praise Every praise Sing hallelujah To our God Glory hallelujah Every praise Every praise Every praise, every word of worship, every praise, every praise is to our God. Sing hallelujah to our God. Glory hallelujah. Yes, he is. 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 Y
Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Every word of worship. Glory, hallelujah, it's to our God. Every praise, 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 every praise is to our God. But open your Bible with me to the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 1. I'm going to try to begin a series of messages in the Gospel of John, looking at the first chapter. But we're just going to deal with this morning, verse 1 of that first chapter. Just only the first verse. You're familiar with it. And if we could all stand, and if we can read that together, and uh, whether you have the King James or the NIV or the uh, New English Bible, it doesn't matter. Verse 1, let us repeat, let us read that together. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Amen. You might be seated. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. Just for a few moments, I want to lift our consideration this thought. Jesus of Nazareth, who is he? Or we can say it in reverse order. Who is this Jesus of Nazareth? In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God and the Word was God. This Jesus of Nazareth, who is he? When we start to talking about Jesus, we're going to get a lot of cross currents. And especially in secular history, world history, that not anything is made mention of about Jesus of Nazareth in their writings. And uh, when I think about it, it's understandable, especially in the first century AD, that there was no mention of anything about Jesus of Nazareth except maybe one or two writers, and we'll get to them later on. But let me give you four reasons why, possibly, in the first century, the secular historians did not make mention of Jesus. First of all, he was born in an obscure, remote part of the Roman Empire. He was born in an area called Palestine, which was far from the hub of the universe. And the universe, the hub of the universe in that day, you gotta understand, Rome was the might of the world, not just of a region, but of the whole world. And Palestine was just an obscure little province of the Roman, Empire. And John makes mention of this in his first chapter, verse 46, where Nathaniel asks Philip a question when Jesus is calling his disciples. And Philip says to Nathaniel, he said, Come and see, we have found the Messiah. And Nathaniel replies to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Which means that Nazareth was not noted for having high intelligence. The people were more, 
country oriented. And then when you think about Jesus's family in this little small town, they were just ordinary people, not, not people that were famous from that standpoint. So for Rome at that, in that day, Jesus of Nazareth meant nothing to them. And then there was a second thing why they did not make mention of him in their writings is because Jesus was not born of a high noble birth. We know that scriptures in the Old Testament tell us that he came out of the lineage of David or the family tree, if you want to say it that way, of the royal line of David. But that dynasty had not been in ruling power for over 500 years. Now Rome was a ruling power. So he didn't come from high no, uh, noble birth, which would have attracted attention. Third thing is that uh, our faith and the whole scope of Christianity is based on the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, his death. That crucifixion was a common thing in that day. It has been said that there was a road called the Villa della de Rosa that went down to Rome, and this road was lined on both sides with crosses and people dying on those crosses. So Christ's crucifixion, which is at the heart of our faith, meant nothing to Rome in that day because this was their method of punishment and they crucified slaves and other people all the time. And then the third, the fourth thing rather, that uh, reason why the secular historians did not make mention of Jesus. You remember Jesus claimed deity, claimed to be God. This wasn't anything that was unusual during that time in the Roman Empire. All Caesars, all emperors that ascended the throne of Rome, they claim to be divine. And they demanded of all of their subjects to bow down and to worship them. In fact, let me give you an example. You remember when Christ was born and it said that when the three wise men, they came to Herod, remember? Now Herod claimed deity. He claimed that he was from God and that he had God's power. And you remember they asked Herod uh, where could they find the Christ child? And you remember Herod replied to them by saying that uh, I don't know because they said, where's this king? Herod told them when you find this so-called king, come back, let me know so I can go to worship him. Herod wasn't thinking about worshiping him. He was thinking about if he could find out where this other king was, he was gonna kill him because he was the divine one. And he knew that, is there somebody else getting ready to rival me to my authority and my power? I have to get rid of them. I have to eliminate them. And this was just natural during the transition during that time in Rome. So for these reasons and maybe for more, Jesus meant nothing to Rome. He was just another peasant that came out of a little small village of ordinary people that, uh, uh, that these folk had no impact on the capital of Rome. But if we take notice of some other historians, and it's not many, but I want to make mention of Josephus. Josephus was a Jewish historian. And in AD 37, he, uh, his writings were accepted by Rome and Josephus was not a Christian. He was a Jew, he tried to be impartial, but he was somewhat prejudiced against Christianity. Now, I, I, want to, I want to share with you what Josephus said about Jesus. 
Josephus wrote and said that Jesus was a wise man. He was a doer of wonderful works. He was a great teacher. Josephus said he was condemned to the cross. And then he said he appeared to the tribe of Christians. He called the sect of Christians in that day, he called them a tribe that were named after him that they claimed he got up and he appeared to them on the third day. And then he said, this tribe is not extinct, extinct rather, to this particular day. They still exist. So at least he did recognize the fact that Jesus of Nazareth did exist. Now, there was also, there was also one other Roman uh, historian, Tacitus, but I don't, I don't have time to go into that, so I'll leave that alone. But I want to mention some other information that uh, according to validating who Jesus of Nazareth was, this is not something that, that is just, uh, how can I say it? It just goes with the wind. But there is a source in terms of Greek manuscripts that supply what we call the New Testament. And all of these Greek manuscripts are dated to prove that the New Testament was written and finalized in the first century. We have at our disposal available and reliable sources. And let me give an example. There are 8,000 handwritten copies of the Latin Vulgate. There are 2,000 manuscripts of the New Testament. So this silences the critics who say that Jesus of Nazareth didn't exist. Or uh, if he did, he wasn't who he claimed to be. Amen? Now, what I want us to look at this morning, let's look at what John, who was an evangelist, let's look at his testimony about Jesus. And he starts his testimony about Jesus of Nazareth by saying, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Now let me see, I want to condense this so it will be mentally palatable, we can understand it. And I'm going to skip a lot in my notes here. John uses a Greek word for word. And that Greek word is logos. L-O-G-O-S. What he is actually saying is that, well, the word logos means to have thoughts and concepts and ideas. Really has a double meaning. And then from the thoughts, the concepts, and the ideas, it means to speak and to communicate these thoughts and these ideas. So what he's referring to here in the Greek, he is saying, in the beginning was Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ was with God. He was in fellowship with the Father. And the word, Jesus Christ, was God. He existed before there was any existence in the world. Let me see, can I rephrase that? What we see is what we think we know. Amen? What we see in terms of going outside and looking at nature and at the universe, the sky, the moon, the stars, we feel as though that from what scientists tell us now, that some of these stars, that they, they have existed, in fact, some of them are already dead, they existed over, over thousands of years ago, and because they were so far from us, we are just now seeing the light 
of those stars. Now that's something to let us know about the expanse of the universe. Well, before those stars or those planets died, before we are just now getting the reflection of their death, because they were so many millions of miles away, Jesus of Nazareth was before that. Does that make sense? Not only was he before that, but without him, there would not have been any that that we see. The thought that he had, he spoke it. And let's go back to Genesis chapter 1, where it talks about the fellowship of God the Father, God the Son. They spoke it, and when they spoke the word, then what happened? It tells us that that existence became existence. The sun, the moon, the stars, animals, plants, everything, what? Came into being. Well, before everything came into being, was their being. God was here. He was eternal. Jesus Christ was with him before they spoke and all that we see came reality or became reality. And John says that this Jesus of Nazareth that others downplay and they don't think that he really exists or that he was a fellow that these followers that they uh, publicized him and they pretended that he was the Messiah, that he was God. He really wasn't God. He was just another Jew that died on the cross. John is saying, yes, he was God. And if you go over to Colossians chapter one, it tells us that Jesus of Nazareth was the visible image of God. Amen. You have been listening to the Shepherd's Corner from Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church, where Dr. Julius Caesar Bonner IV is our pastor. We are located at 4570 Page Boulevard at Reverend G.H. Pruitt Place. Sunday morning, Sunday school begins at 9 a.m. Sunday morning services begin at 10.30 a.m. And Wednesday night Bible study starts at 7 p.m. Contact us at 314-535-7548. Visit us online at pgmbcstl.org and like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Thank you for listening and join us again next week.